I was commissioned to turn a coffee scoop using a piece of Kamani wood that somebody was given and they made some other stuff with this as well uh, but they wanted a coffee scoop to match so that's what we're going to do today uh, I had to go to Woodcraft to pick up the coffee scoop kit if you will and while I was there I scored this really pretty piece of walnut burl so uh, I'm going to cut this into quarters round it up a little bit and I'll be using this for the inserts for uh, some of my resin mix things that are coming down the pipe. So come along with me and let's see how this coffee scoop goes. But first I got another sticker. It's from MarkLindsayCNC.com uh, Mark's a great guy. If you do CNC stuff and, and need help or assistance he does really really good tutorials on, on, on CNC related things like g-code and or how to work within particular pieces of software actually to get your CNC to work the way you want it to work. I'll put you right up here Mark. As always I'll put a link up here. Go check Mark out. Appreciate it buddy. And another sticker, this one from Robert at Crosscut Creations. He does a lot of pens and things like that. I'll put a link up here. Go give Robert a check. He's a good dude. Robert, I think I'm going to put you right here. So go check Robert's channel out. I appreciate it. Thanks, Robert. Yours is on the way. When I showed you my other cap, the white one with the red, black, and blue uh, logo. I mentioned that I had this co these coming in uh, in two-tone. It's green and yellow. That looks better on the darker caps, so you can get this cap in blue, red, black, navy, and I can't remember if there's another color, but uh, they're, they're on my website, so if you want one, go get it. Okay, I've got it center punched. First thing I want to do is turn this between centers and make it round. This is considerably longer than I'm going to need for that handle, but I'm going to put a tenon down here so I can chuck it up. And then this part down here, which looks to have the prettiest grain in it, will be, I'll concentrate on this for the handle. And I'll make the handle probably yay long so that it's comfortable. I don't want it too skinny and I don't want it too fat either. I'll be taking measurements to bring it to this diameter because after I get it turned around and got a tenon down here, I'll chuck it up, I'll drill it out for this, and then I'll set my calipers to this distance right here and turn this end down and come up with some kind of decoration and then I'll, I'll turn it. This is about the diameter maybe a little bit more of a sharpie so I'm gonna go about half again that wide I think I want it to be about three quarters of an inch yeah one inch would be a little too big I'm afraid but I'm thinking about three quarters that looks about right maybe seven eighths I don't know we'll see gotta get it round first about a thousand rpm See if I need to change my direction of cut, and it looks like I might because I'm getting some tear out this direction, so let's go that way. And I'm moving my whole body. Started with my weight shifted to my left leg, moved it to my right leg. Yeah, this way cuts much better. Got a little bit of a grain shift in places. It's really curly. So, uh, you'll see a little bit of tear out there from that. That's some pretty wood. Okay, I slowed my cut speed down and I have a lot less tear out where that grain direction changes and I figured that would be the case. That's good to know. 
this is still too big so let's get this down I want to get it round it's not quite there yet I'm going to do a peeling cut on this end Just find the end of the piece. That is perfect. Before we go any further, let's get a hole drilled. That'll work. I'm not, I don't want to use a lot of pressure there because I don't want to risk splitting this out. I just want to stabilize this. This piece is rounded on the end. This is a bead. And because of that, I don't want to flat up against this bead. So I need another bead there. That's why I'm turning that over. And I'll match it with a corresponding bead. That'll work. What I'll do is I'll cut, cut the end of this off. I'll leave this flared in the back a little. I'm gonna run this design by the customer, see what he thinks. Some of my famous French is yellow mustard shellac. Actually, it's shellac and it's thin shellac. It's about a one pound cut. I use this for sanding sealer. Would you look at the chatoyants in there? That's just gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And the way that comes to a point right there, it almost looks like it's spliced. But it's not, it's one piece of wood. That's just the way this grain grows. It's crazy. Look at that. That's just nuts. Just look at that. Would you look at that? Would you just look at that? Crazy. That's just crazy. Beautiful stuff. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna part this off. Please ignore the chipmunks you hear in the background. This is a collet chuck, a Beal collet chuck. I'll put a link to where you can get it down below. And I'm using this piece of quarter inch dowel as a jam chuck. 
Apparently the dowel rod is a little bit warped, so I need another solution. That's pretty good. That's just an old piece of really thin mouse pad that I took the hard plastic or vinyl off of. That's close enough, I think. All I have to do is shape the end of this a little bit. See, no marks, no issues. Perfect. Would you look at the chatoyants? My goodness. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. All right, I'm gonna change cameras and show you how I'm gonna finish this. Okay, this is a gallon of semi-gloss lacquer. If you have seen any of my pen videos where I finish a pen with lacquer, this is the method that I use. This is the dip method. I find that this works best for me, so that's what I'm going to use here. I like it better than spraying. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip this in here, and then I'm going to turn it over, and I have a coupler or an, a spacer, not a coupler. I have a spacer down here that I made out of Corian that's about the same diameter as this. And what's going to happen is it's rather than the lacquer all pooling down at the bottom and being ugly, it will go around and flow onto this piece of Corian. And I will dip it, wait about 30 minutes for it to dry, dip it again, and then I may dip it one or two more times. Let as much of this flow off as I can so that I don't waste any more than I have to. And this is semi-gloss. It's called brushing lacquer. It's Deft brand. I like this band of brand of lacquer better than any I've used. And then I set it in this stand. It's perpendicular so all the lacquer will run down. Now I'll come back in a half hour or so correct any areas of the finish where there's like a bubble or whatever and dip it again and the reason I like this method and the reason that I like lacquer is because lacquer is self-healing I've mentioned that before and I'll come back okay I've dipped this twice now and I'm gonna let it set overnight I don't know if it's gonna need another coat or two or not but I'm gonna let this set overnight come back in the morning if I need to Hit it with some four out steel wool to remove any uh, fuzzies or whatever and if necessary I'll dip it again. Well here it is. I'll put some steels up at the end. Uh, I hope they like it. I'm pretty sure they will. It is not glossy. I used a satin finish on it. That was by request. I'm going to let this lacquer cure for just a few more days and then I'll box it up and send it off to them. So, it wasn't much, just a quick little scoop handle. Yeah, it was a quick little project, but something that needed to be done anyway, so I thought I might as well film it and not have a project on it. So, uh, the coffee scoops are kind of fun to turn, something that's different from the norm once in a while. I really appreciate y'all watching, I really do. Uh, never know what you're going to find around here. I'll be turning something or doing some kind of woodworking project. Uh, mostly turning, because that's my passion. I appreciate you watching. I just, I just do. If you'd like to help support the Messy Studio in any way so that we can uh, stay caught up on things like abrasives and finishes and resin and whatnot, there's a couple of ways you can do that. One way is use the Amazon affiliate link down below. The prices don't cost or aren't different if you use that link. You get the same price regardless. They just send me a few pennies off of each sale. That helps us out. So I appreciate it. You can go to my website as seen right here and order swag, caps, t-shirts, coffee mugs, 
some of the things I've turned are up on my website. Uh, I still haven't updated it in a while, but I know I'll get to that soon, I promise. I've got taxes to do. Also, enter code BILLY10 for Axe Wood Paste, link down there. Uh, and the links be in the description. Here's the website. 10% off your order for Axe uh, Wood Paste Kit. That includes the polish and restoring cream. If you have any questions, by all means, ask. Uh, shoot me an email right here. I'd be happy to answer. Please like, share. Seriously, that helps us out a ton. Uh, if you're so inclined, hit the subscribe button. If you're not already subscribed, I appreciate those things too. I'm still up in the air as what my next turning project is going to be. I want it to be... Uh, I, don't, I haven't decided if I want to go straight wood or, or resin wood hybrid again. I enjoy doing those. They take a little bit longer, but not always. You know, sometimes you got stuff to fill and things with the kind of wood that I turn when I'm turning wood. So come back and we'll get it figured out. Thanks for watching. Y'all come back.